Hi everybody and welcome back to the channel. So on this channel, I just invest in the stock market using Wealth Simple Trade and I'm trying to get my portfolio up to a value of $25,000. We're currently at 23,585. I have an RRSP and a TFSA as well. RRSP is doing a little bit better in terms of total return up 15% primarily just due to Starbucks doing very, very well for us. And in my TFSA, we are uh, down a little bit, pretty flat in this one, but I do have a lot of Canadian banks and those have been getting absolutely hammered uh, in the past year, especially due to the US banking crisis. So recent news would be that uh, the CPI for Canada came in a little bit higher for the month of April. It was 4.4% instead of 4.1%. So due to that, it seems like you know inflation's not cooling off as quickly as uh, anticipated. And of course, the fear would be that the Bank of Canada will raise interest rates yet again, which will you know keep pushing down the price of stocks and uh, just make uh, borrowing money a lot harder for companies and for people too. And uh, Home Depot also reported their earnings and they were, it was the biggest earnings miss in 20 years. And they also gave some bad outlook. And basically after that happened, uh, a lot of retailers fell in share price as well. So there's a bit of a sell off in retailers just due to a fear and weakening demand. So let me know in the comments below if you think that you know Home Depot doing poorly is a sign of a recession to come, or if you know it's just normalizing demand uh, from home improvements, you know, which was really uh, the demand was really accelerated due to the pandemic, and now we've just caught up to normalized demand. <laughs> So it hasn't been a good week uh, this week for stocks. So we're down 2% just in the past week. But again, uh, I actually look at it as a good thing because I get to pick up some more ownership in companies that I want at a lower price and we get more dividend income at a lower price, which is always great to see. So I could see big tech still doing well. Apple's just hanging around in the 170 range. Algonquin really had recently had some earnings and uh i mean they were okay uh, nothing really um nothing really notable in there to uh to mention uh etd doing quite well still sitting at 66 dollars we have aritzia having a little bit of a recovery so this is a little bit lower it's been climbing back up a little uh, had a big uh, big 25 percent crash that i mentioned in my previous update I'm, I'm not too worried about this one it's just a lot of fear about uh retailers struggling and a recession being imminent but we'll see about that and uh brookfield asset management and bn i purchased one share of both of these and they both presented their earnings and you know they had pretty solid growth all around in um Pretty much all their business segments, uh, BAM did quite well, BN did quite well, so not too worried about these two. Uh, BN has a little bit more of a sell-off due to a lot of fear of uh, Brookfield's uh, real estate portfolio, uh, but the management did assure that uh, their real estate, or at least for their office real estate, was very, very high quality and that they weren't worried, and they also mentioned that there were there was a lot of insider buying of the stock and that they were going to do share buybacks while the stock was undervalued. So I'm more than happy adding to both of these and I split my investment between them because BAM pays a much higher dividend than BN. So I'm just gonna buy B, uh, BAM when it gives me a little bit of a dip and definitely gonna add to BN uh, because it has a much, much bigger discount right now uh, compared to my average. I also purchased one more share of ETHY. So I use uh, ShakePay and I shake my phone every single day to get some free Bitcoin. And uh, I use that to, I sell that Bitcoin and then I buy this uh, ETF, which pays me a monthly dividend uh, for owning Ethereum. So, so, that's, so that's how I get that. So you can feel free to use my link for uh, ShakePay or even Wolf Simple Trade in the description below. And you can get started investing and getting free Bitcoin. Uh, and Google has 
had quite the performance. Uh, the stock has just soared ever since uh, the CEO had an event and uh, just kept saying the word AI over and over and over again. And um, Google stock has uh, has gone up immensely as a result. Um, so we'll see if that momentum can continue. Uh, I still think it has a bit of room to grow, although it's getting closer to its fair value. So I don't know if I'm gonna be continuing to add to Google at this point. And uh, I also purchased 1.64 shares of Granite Real Estate. And this is an excellent read. I've had it in the portfolio before and they just had an immense earnings report. They increased their, um, their AFFO by 18% uh, year on year um, from you know the first quarter of 2022. So very impressive and they reduced their payout ratio. So this REIT just really showed me a lot of growth and I really do like um, industrial real estate right now because they have a very high occupancy rate of 99% and it's just a very high quality REIT and I'm very happy to get it back in the portfolio. The reason I sold it originally was to focus on purchasing a, a lot of Scotiabank and a lot of TD Bank when they were um, selling off and uh, my granite REIT was trading around $98 at the time and I felt like uh, the banks were just undervalued so I decided to sell my granite at the time and put that money into the banks because they gave a higher yield it just seemed like a better opportunity um, now the banks haven't recovered yet uh, but granite actually fell even more than both the banks so it turned out to be a good move at the time but I think at the current price, especially after that earnings report I saw, I'm really happy to get Granite back in the portfolio. And I also have Smart Centers, uh, but I don't want all of my, I want about a 10% allocation of real estate in my portfolio. And I don't wanna have all of that in Smart Centers. I want to have uh, Granite to be a part of that, maybe try a 5% split between the two. So I'm going to be uh, adding this one here and there using fractional shares just because the shares are a little bit of ex a little bit expensive relative to my normal deposits. So that's one feature I really like about Well Simple is that you can build shares of companies gradually, even if you don't have you know eighty dollars or several hundred dollars uh, to buy the stock. So that's a feature I absolutely need because I like to buy individual holdings. And for HYLD, I purchased two more shares. Uh, going up to 204 shares. So I just used the dividend that I received from there. Uh, so we got about $24 from it and I just reinvest that, reinvested that right back into it. Next month will be even more income from this, which is great. And with TELUS, I also purchased uh, two more shares going up to 60 shares total. And this one's in a dip as well, but I'm very, I actually hope that it stays down because I'm planning to buy four shares of TELUS um, every single month in 2023 until the end of the year. So if uh, if the price stays down, that's fantastic for me. I'd rather average down than average up. And um, they recently had a dividend raise, uh, as I mentioned in the previous update, of 3.6%. So always nice to see your stocks raise their dividends and then the share price goes down. I love seeing that. And if you've stayed around for the whole video thank you so much for watching and please leave a like and subscribe to the channel so you never miss one of my updates uh so the dividends earned from the portfolio all time are 143514 uh annually we've increased from the previous update from $1009 to 1023 the monthly average has increased from 8416 to 8527 and the weekly average has also increased from 1942 to 1968 per week. Uh, daily, we're earning an extra three cents a day, so 277 up to 280 per day. So we're getting closer to our $3 a day goal, just 20 cents per day in uh, dividend income, and we'll be at $3 a day, and then we'll up that goal as well. And the months to earn $100 has decreased from 1.19 months to 1.17. And the hourly wage, if my portfolio were to work a 40 hour work week for me, unchanged at 49 cents per hour for a 40 hour work week but uh, we're going to keep reinvesting our dividends and continuing to make regular deposits and this number will continue to grow over time and we can see year on year 
Uh, first year of investing, I earned 261.80 in dividends. Second year, 743.92. So almost a triple in a single year. And then, you know, about four and a half, five months roughly, um, we're at 429.42 for 2023. So we've already surpassed 2021 and we are on pace to pass 2022. So I want to. Uh, consistently get more dividends every single year grow it at you know as high of a rate as i can and have a great day everybody and uh see you in the next one